To install Ubuntu on VirtualBox, we'll start by downloading the proper version of Ubuntu. And that's pretty easy to do. You just go out to the Ubuntu download page, decide if you want a desktop or a server installation, and then download the latest edition. We're going to use the desktop for this demo, but the server installation is similar. First off, click on the download button, and it'll take you to the download page. If the download doesn't start, there's a small download button here that you can click, and the download will download an ISO of the operating system. We'll start VirtualBox, and then we'll go ahead and install the new version of Ubuntu. I'm going to stop the downloads because I've already downloaded to save time. I'm going to select New, and then we'll go ahead and put in the specs for our operating system. You can call it what you want, but if you're going to have a lot of virtual machines, you may want to try to find a name that makes sense to you. So I'm going to call mine Ubuntu Desktop Demo. Probably want to give it as much RAM as you can within reason. I'm going to go ahead and give it 2048. And that won't stress out my computer too much. And I'll go ahead and create a virtual hard disk now. The type is Linux. And the version is 64-bit, so we don't have to change those at this time. We'll go ahead and hit create. And then we have to decide what kind of hard disk do we want. If you're only going to use this on VirtualBox, just use the defaults. If you think there's some chance that you might transfer this virtual machine back and forth between VMware and VirtualBox, you may want to select the VMDK format. VirtualBox is good at handling either format but VMware has a strong preference for the VMDK. Again, it just depends on whether or not you think you would ever use this virtual machine in some other platform like ESX or for VMware. You probably do want to change the hard disk size. At a minimum, even if you're going to just use this for developing software or for other some other small focus task, you still probably want to try to get 20 gigabytes if your underlying hard disk can support it. If you think you're going to use this operating system for a variety of tasks, you may even want to go and make it 80 gigabytes. And of course, if you have some special reason to make it bigger, then do that now. So now the basic virtual machine is created, and we'll go ahead and fine tune the specifications. So we can hit settings, and then you can choose the categories here at the top, and then fill in the settings at the bottom. For most people, leaving the defaults is fine. Some of the ones that you may want to look at would be whether or not you want to share the clipboard and enable drag and drop. The clipboard is a nice option even for casual users. Drag and drop is not necessary, but is a feature that's handy if you like it. Under system, we can change the amount of memory again if we hadn't already done that before. We can also change the number of CPU cores. If your underlying machine can support it, it's good to use at least two CPU cores but you don't want to pick too many of them and stress out the underlying machine. As far as display, it can help to give the virtual machine a little bit more memory so the graphics can run better. 128 megabytes is not too much with a fairly modern computer. 
if you're going to be putting this virtual machine on a low powered machine you can leave it at the 16 megabytes and it'll get by but Ubuntu does have a pretty aggressive desktop system so a little bit more memory helps smooth things out and shared folders is something that you may want to consider a shared folder is a folder on your real computer the so-called host operating system where you can put files and you'll actually see them appear inside of the guest operating system in this case Ubuntu and to set that up you hit the plus icon and then choose a folder path so in my case I created a folder already and I'll just select it I'm going to choose auto mount and leave the read-only box unchecked that way I can have bi-directional file sharing between the host and guest operating system and we'll hit OK we click on storage and now we can put the virtual DVD or CD if you will into what the virtual machine perceives as its disk so we'll click the add optical disk button we'll hit choose disk we'll go to our downloads and we'll choose the ISO image that we downloaded and then click open you can think of this as the equivalent in real life of taking uh, some optical media like a DVD and putting it into the tray ISO is an image file it's what a, a DVD looks like if you save it to a, a file so now we have two disks installed we have the ISO from Ubuntu and then VirtualBox includes the VirtualBox Guest Editions ISO which is the extra features that can make using a virtual machine much better into the second disk so think of this as having two DVD in your virtual machine we're going to hit start VirtualBox will start and it will read Ubuntu off of that virtual disk that ISO file that we downloaded and get the system running you can make the screen bigger and then click install Ubuntu We'll choose the language and then we'll go ahead and hit continue install now and continue continue again through the different screens put in the name that you want your user account to be and pick a password the installation process will take a while so we'll go ahead and let that complete when the installation completes you can go ahead and hit restart And now you can log in.